And you can tell he's an Appaloosa because he's got big black spots. He has striated hooves, which means he has lines in his hooves. And he also has around, all around his muzzle. It's kind of a different color. And those are three signs of an Appaloosa, traits of an Appaloosa horse breed. So we're going to start first with the curry combs. Okay, I have two curry combs. This is a, a softer curry comb. This is more for our face and for the back of the, um, the bottom of their legs from the knees on down to their hooves. And then this is one for a body. So we're going to start with just the, the one for the face and the legs on down from the knee. And then we'll go to the, the body one. The idea of the curry combs is to loosen dirt. So what we're going to do is we're going to rub in a circular motion and we're going to loosen dirt and we're going to loosen hair and that's where we're going to start. We love to get his face done. Now we'll do his legs from the knee on down. There's a lot of hair coming off of this, this particular leg, so it's good to get that all loose and he'll be a lot more comfortable. with the face curry comb. We're going to use the regular body curry comb. You can see it's a little bit different. This has softer, softer bristles and this is more just kind of grooved in a harder plastic. And again you'll see a lot of dirt coming off and a lot of dead hair. Horses usually like to get curry because it just makes them feel a little more comfortable. And you can do his belly and his back. And all the way down to his knees, which are actually in the back called his hocks, but it's the same idea, it has the knees up front. It's all finished being curry, so now we're going to start with brushes. This one has a little harder, stiffer bristles. This one has the softer bristles. So we're going to start with the harder bristles just to get the dirt and the hair off that we just curried and made nice and loose. He doesn't need a special brush for the bottom of his of his legs anymore. We just use a regular brush, even though we use a special curry comb on his on the bottom of his legs. We're just going to use a regular two regular body brushes. see the dirt and the hair coming off. Stiffer brushes, 
bristles. Now we're going to go and do the one with the softer bristles. Just to get the extra hair we didn't get with the first brush. Since he's busy chasing flies and I want him to know that I'm here, I'm touching the back of his leg so he knows that I'm not a fly and he doesn't need to chase me away. Touches. I'm going to get a towel and just go over him, which will again just take off the extra dirt and, and hair that didn't come off with the brushes. All right, just a regular towel, <laughs> nothing special. But with the towel, you can get around his eyes better, um, and you know certainly can with a brush and his nose too. So I like to kind of just kind of touch base with everything. Make sure we get the, the eyes cleaned and the nose area clean. And then I'll just go over him with the, with the towel. I also touch him when I go behind him so he knows I'm there. Horses can't see directly behind them. They have really great vision side to side, but directly in front and directly behind is, is a hard place for them to see. So if you touch them, they know that you're there. All right, I think he's ready to have his mane and tail brushed. Just a regular brush, you buy it at a regular horse supply place. And we're just going to brush his mane and tail. He doesn't have much of a mane. I mean, that's part of being an Appaloosa, too. That's a trait of the Appaloosa breed, too. A sparse mane and tail. So they don't usually have big, long, pretty full tails or, or manes. So no braiding. Yeah, no braiding. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> braiding would be a challenge. do his tail. It's just like when you have long hair yourself. You want to try to get the tangles out. I usually hold it and try to get the, the tangles out of, out of the bottom first so it doesn't pull so much. And I also usually stand off to the side too just in case he would get scared about something. I don't want to be in a direct line of kick. The top part of their tail has a bone in it, and that comes down to about here, and then the rest of this is just just hair. You can kind of see the bone. I don't know, it's pretty much hair here, but you can kind of see underneath. There's the bone. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do over here a little bit, trying to get it to go on one side, but there's such a little amount, it's hard to make it just lay flat on one side, so we do our best. All right. And I think the last thing we have left, which is really important, is picking the hooves. So that's just cleaning out the, the bottom of the hoof. Make sure that it's free of dirt and free of stones or any kind of 
you know, cuts that you can see or bruises. Here's a hoof pick. Um, we start with the pick side, which is a metal piece. And then this side is for after you get the, the dirt loosened, kind of like the curry comb idea, where you're loosening the dirt and then you use this brush part to brush it away. You can see it's pretty much dirt in here. He doesn't have shoes on. Um, for what he does, which is basically hang out in the pasture and go on trail rides, he doesn't need shoes. Horses who do, do different kinds of work need shoes. So it's kind of an individual thing whether they need them or not. dirt off of here so you can see and their hooves are like your fingernails and your toenails that's why they can get them cut and it doesn't hurt he gets his trimmed about every eight weeks because not wearing shoes he doesn't need them done quite as often if he had shoes on it would be every six weeks of the dirt out so I'm going to take the brush in and just brush in here you can see he has a little V here all right let's go bud come on that's okay all right so we're going to pick all the dirt out and what I wanted to show you in the middle here is a V this is called the frog and it's soft and when they walk it helps absorb pressure from just walking just the you know the walking of your putting that pressure on your leg when it hits the ground walking trotting cantering galloping so you always want to clean out on both sides of that v that frog and then it's done so how often do you do this um for him because i'm working <laughs> i don't have a lot of time I do it once a week. Bye. Okay.